You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. We're in Ogden, Utah at the Intermountain Farmers Association, a huge company that started back in 1923 with chickens and eggs. You're gonna hear all about this wonderful American story and you're also gonna hear some tremendous interesting history about the state of Utah and what made this area as exciting and thriving as it is. Stay tuned, we'll be right back from Ogden, Utah. You're gonna love this story. In the mid 1800s, America was pushing west and expanding at a rate unknown to any previous civilization. Americans pursued their dreams and unlimited opportunity. But they needed food, equipment, seeds, and tack to press on beyond the established cities and towns already settled. Out of this demand, a new retailer was born, the General Store, who handled everything a westward family would need to survive. Today, these retailers provide rural Americans the same materials, service, and expertise that made them invaluable over 150 years ago. Join Noble Outfitters as we rediscover the retailing backbone of America. Hear their story in their own words, how they've not only survived, but actually thrived in the modern world. Come along as we go On the Road with Noble Outfitters. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters, and we're gonna tour this beautiful store and tell you all about it here in Ogden, Utah, the IFA. We're gonna meet Sandra Palaga, who's one of the buyers for IFA, tries to keep all this product in stock that they have in this beautiful store, and Trey Lopes, the store manager. Thank you for coming out and visiting with me. Nice and, to meet you. And uh, thanks for your hospitality. This is just, this is, I love the history of IFA, and even more so, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of, of Utah in general, which is, I think for the viewers out there gonna be fascinating because I learned some fascinating facts about not only IFA, but just the state of Utah. It was, it's amazing, uh, all the different things that, that are going on out here. But what makes IFA kind of unique in all the different products that it carries here in the store? Well, you know, we feel like we carry a, a wide variety of products, pretty much anything that uh, people would need for the home and ranch, that rural lifestyle. You know, we sell you know live chickens in the spring, chicks, and that's a big business for us. A lot of people uh, like to raise their own chickens and, and get farm fresh eggs and, right. and have a project for the kids to work on. You know, we sell rabbits. Um, we're very <laughs> involved in 4-H um, and FFA programs with the youth. We have a young producer program that uh, that we do that uh, we, we train kids on the spring on, the, on on how to feed animals and how to take care of them and how to raise them, and then they show them later on at the county fairs and we support them with discounts on bagged feeds and show products. Right. And so uh, the FFA is a great program for the kids and it's important for the youth to, to learn all this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. just, I mean, it's part of the heritage of our, of our sure. country, right? You bet. But so if I'm, if I'm gonna buy, you know, a chicken coop, I can pick this up for 600 bucks. Does it come with chickens? No, but we can work you a great deal on chickens. Okay, I can get a few. I can throw me in a few? You bet. Okay, so how many chickens should we be, should I have in this coop? This one it will take between three and five mother hens. Okay, mm -hmm. and how many eggs do I get a day? Most chickens, depending on the variety of chicken, but most chickens will lay an egg a day. An egg a day, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna get like a half a dozen <laughs> eggs a day. Okay, I'm a chef, so I love that, right? So sure. that gives me two, three egg omelets, you know, every day. And you gotta keep eating, right? Because, uh, but the eggs last for a while, you know? Sure. You know, my grandmother, she never even put the eggs in the fridge, right? She used to have the eggs, you know, just out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, everybody's like, oh, we'll put the eggs in the fridge. Do you really need to refrigerate the eggs or you just keep them cool? Well, yeah, I mean, I think today we keep eggs refrigerated. I think that's common practice. Yeah. But, you know, I think that uh, the benefit of this is they're, they're farm fresh. I right. mean, you're, you, harvest the egg the day it's laid and and it's it's got to be a difference in that flavor you know i mean that sure. it's got to be right and i i i had some friends that had some laying hens and their yolks were like orange you know they weren't like a light yellow color they were like really an orange color yeah. so tell me a little bit about just you know i mean you have to buy all this product sandra so i mean how do you like uh, you know, this is crazy, you know. Well, I'm actually the category manager for, over clothing. Okay. Um, so I do all the clothing purchasing for all of our stores. Um, but we do have clothing, we have fencing, we have home and garden, we have tack. We, we have category managers all over all of those areas. 
Um, with our market being so diverse with our 24 retail stores, we, we really have to know what our customers are looking for. So, of course, not everything can go into every single store, but we really try to, to look at what those customers in those markets are looking for. And, you know, that's a common thread as well. It's just, that's America, right? I mean, you know, a couple, couple people get together, they start an egg co-op, and the next thing you know, you know. It's a big business. Almost a, like you'll be coming up on 100 years not too long from now. Yeah. You know, a 100-year-old company that started with just some people collecting eggs, yeah. you know. So that's America, though, right? It is. Yeah, love our country. Well, thank you very much for your time, Sandra and Chase. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. You've got a beautiful store thank here. You. And uh, I'll look around and have some fun here today. And, Please uh, do. And we'll see you in a little bit. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters coming up next in Ogden, Utah at the IFA. You're going to meet CEO Lane Anderson and VP of Marketing Brad Camp. Stay tuned. We're going to have some fun listening about this company's history and the history of Utah. We'll be right back. I want to thank these fellows for their hospitality. Lane, thank you for your hospitality here at the store today. Brad? Thanks for being here. Hey, we appreciate it. It's, it's fun for us to go around the country and visit stores like this, you know, companies like this that do a, an amazing job of supplying their local, you know, communities. And of course, your local community is a good sized community because you have a huge company. Um, but it's fun for us to understand also how did it get started? Somebody said, hey, let's do this. And almost 100 years later, here's what's going on. So how did it all get started? Well, it really got started when uh, three guys got together in an effort to market their eggs, the produce of their farms, and, uh, and also revive and preserve the rural economy. And they came together and started a egg marketing cooperative. By the end of the 1923, it was the first year, and by the end of that year, they had over 500 farm families cooperatively together. Working to working together to market their eggs, and then how did it go from eggs to what was next? I mean, it, it got into, I mean, you know, everything. Over the last uh, 93 years, so it's been quite an evolution. You know, they went from marketing eggs and and uh, dress poultry to being in the feed business for multiple species, and then you know today actually being in the feed business, the agronomy business, and then our chain of, of IFA country stores in the farm supply business and also selling these other products. Great American story. It's like, a, you know, 1923, what was going on back there, you know, and, and this area to me is fascinating. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by, you know, because really, you know, when you fly over this area, you know, it's like there's nothing for, for many, 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 many miles, nothing. And then just on the other side of the mountain, you have this little metropolis here and and it's very interesting and and the history behind it and the history behind the Mormon church you know coming here uh, back way back when and and how they came here why they came here looking for a place that that they could do what they wanted to do and create their lifestyle here you know without any issues I think that's fascinating too uh, you know Brad we were talking a little bit about that and you're kind of a you're both kind of a history buff behind this and uh, uh, it's it's very interesting. So you know, somebody was telling me about the handcart people, handcart people. I, well, what is the handcart? You know, what is that? Well, the, there wasn't enough horses and covered wagons at, at a certain point, so they just started pulling carts out here uh, to to be a part of the of the church, and walked across the country to get here. And many of them didn't make it. You know, it was a it was a talk about a tough trip. You know. You know, tell me a little bit about your knowledge of, of just how people came to the valley here and, and from where and how and, and those, those hard times they faced getting out here. Yeah, it makes you wonder what, uh, why, they, why they stopped here. It was so barren and <laughs> such a desert. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody said, okay, uh, all, we walked all the way out here. It's like, a, for this. this is it? Yeah. You know? It's like the lake's but, full of salt. You know? Look what they've done. <laughs> look, what, look what they started. And, Absolutely. Uh, uh, 1846, they left Nauvoo, Illinois, crossed the uh, frozen uh, Mississippi River. At that time, of course, uh, with covered wagons, and and the hand carts that you were talking about came a little bit later when uh, uh, the equipment was scarce. It was much cheaper uh, to bring people here from uh, from th those who were migrating from Europe into this country and and to settle and to be with uh, the, the the Mormons. Uh, so they came. You know, covered wagon, hand carts, uh, many walked uh, any way they could get here. 
crazy. Uh, got here in 1847 uh, in the summer uh, to Salt Lake City, and that's uh, that's where it all began. Right, and from all over the world, you know, yes. not not just okay. Some folks from the East Coast decided to come out. Most of these folks were settlers coming from other parts of Europe and other parts of the world, coming over, landing on on the East Coast, going into Ellis Island, and then making the trek out. You know, because of what they what they heard. The word went back. Hey, we've got. We've got a place, you know, and and interestingly too, that the, the Mormon Church wasn't really understood, you know. I mean, it was almost like, what are these, what are these people doing, you know? What's going on with this? It was like a, almost a, like an uh, early cult, you know, kind of a thought because uh, uh, somebody was telling me that, you know, when the church was being built and this church was a massive, you know, the Mormon Tabernacle Church was built, it was big and the actual, actually, the American. <laughs> The United States government thought that it was a fort that was being built and that these people were going to start their own country. And so they sent the cavalry out to take a look at what was going on with this fort. And they said, hey, it, it's a church. It's, it's not a fort. You know, they're, they're just here, you know, celebrating their way of life, you know, in their religion. And so that was, that was kind of a crazy thought to, to have happen. But... You yourself, uh, Lane, was telling me that you, you actually have one of the old covered wagons that was used coming out. I, I can't verify that, but I do have a, uh, an original covered wagon that they uh, believe came across the plains with the Mormon pioneers. That's yeah, correct. can you imagine the hardships of, of coming, coming across? And, and it'd be interesting, but nobody knows the percentages, but how many actually didn't make it? You know, how many didn't get here? Well, fortunately, most of them made it, but there were some some parties that met with hardship and whatever from that standpoint. Absolutely. And uh, uh, we were talking about, you know, families would come out and the hand carts and whatever, and sometimes the parents got ill, died on the way. The kids got out and came out. They didn't have any parents. Other families would take them in and bring them and help them come and raise them. And Crazy, yeah. crazy interesting. Well, I've had a great time here in Ogden and just meeting some of your folks and talking about the history of the company, you know, starting out with a co-op for egg farmers and the different things that are going on. It's just, it's just America, right? Uh, it's just how, how it all happens and how it starts. You talk about pioneers, what these pioneers went through, you know, for their faith and what they wanted to do and, and the determination to come out here, help others, create business and, and really kind of, I mean, create, create a, a, a huge, economy here in basically the middle of no man's land. Um, so determination, right? I mean, that's that's America. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's amazing. There are a lot of determined people in our past, and that's a great thing, and we're proud of our past, and we want to honor it, but we also think it's important to, to press forward and focus and build our future for both uh, you know, the cooperative and the people who depend on it. Elaine, Thank you very much for your hospitality here, Brad. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I've had a great time visiting you guys and visiting the store. And I uh, hope to be back and see you again. Thank you for selling our products. We appreciate that. You're doing a great job for us. And, uh, and we, just, we, just like the, we just like what you guys are doing. And uh, keep it up. Keep working hard. And make it happen. Well, thanks. You're, so it's a good relationship and a good fit. Absolutely. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Coming up next, you're gonna meet the Wayment Brothers, a couple of characters. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're on the recipe of the week and I've got with me Sandy Shoup and Sandy is gonna tell us a little bit about how, how to cook in a Dutch oven. Sure. Thank you, it's nice meeting you. And you know, I love food. I'm a, I'm a foodie. Me too. And just, you know, I mean, just understanding cooking in a Dutch oven, it's kind of interesting, you know, because it was done when, I mean, you're coming across the plains or whatever you're camping in. There's, there's no stove, there's no gas or whatever. But these, these Dutch ovens were created to cook right on the coals or, or adjacent to the coals or, or suspended over the coals. Um, but you've got some new tricks you want to talk to us about, about the Dutch oven and, and how to use that a little bit more every day sure. because of the versatility and the great conductivity of the heat for this tool that we could use in the kitchen every day. So tell us a little bit about the meal you've made for us today. Hey, today I did what's called ultimate veggies. This has got whole potatoes, whole carrots, whole mushrooms and onions, 
with a chicken soup or cream of mushroom soup and sour cream. You cook it that way for an hour maybe. And once those carrots are done, then you put um, the cheddar cheese on the top and crumbled up bacon on top of that. Ooh, you just got, you just got real exciting now. <laughs> okay, well that sounds great. Well, let's take a look at what you got here. The Dutch oven is, is a great tool to actually use in your oven at home because of the way that heat stays inside that Dutch oven and how it cooks so so tight and so moist right. that it's a wonderful way to actually put some stuff in the oven at home exactly. and and kind of like it'd be kind of fun to to take this out at home you know and put exactly. this on the kitchen table it's like hey we, co we cooked as if we were cooking outside right. but really it's just heat right exactly. it's the Dutch oven that does the trick exactly that's cool well you know if you don't mind I'd like to dish some of this sure. up and give it a little try um, so all your seasoning basically came from the soups that you put in. A little and of bit course, of seasoned salt and fresh ground pepper as Okay, well. so you are putting a little seasoning yeah. in there. Yes. Okay. Good. Lots of cheese on wow, there. Wow, that you. looks incredible. I love the cheese. It's a little hot. And so. I got a little bacon going. And you know, that's another thing. <laughs> you, you could take this out of the oven and, and set, it, set it on the table, you know, on a cloth. And you could eat an hour. It's still gonna, it's still gonna be piping hot. You could cook anything in this Dutch oven that you can cook in your oven at home. You can do pizzas, cobblers, roasts, chicken, anything that you cook at home you can cook, or in your regular oven, you can cook inside this Dutch oven. But like I said, it's either portable or rather than have a Dutch oven that sits there and use once or twice a year for camping, use it every Sunday for your Sunday dinner. Throw it in, go to church, come back, and everything's all ready to go. I love it. And the, the taste of the, the vegetables are, it's interesting because when you're cooking you know, you're sauteing and you're, you're cooking on a pan. There's a little bit difference in the carrots actually burst with the carrot flavor. Exactly. So I think, I, I think it stays there and it, and it works within it. So, wow, that's a beautiful dish. And, you know, I'd like to come back again. Maybe you can cook me up a little stew or something. Awesome. And everybody out there, you know, all of our recipes are available online. Go to nobleoutfitters.com slash RFDTV. Pick up all our recipes from the shows and you'll be able to get Sandy Shoup's recipe for how to cook in a Dutch oven. And maybe you throw a couple more recipes in there for us. Sure. Yeah, too. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Coming up next, you're gonna meet the Waymont Brothers, a couple of characters. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Quaid, that's a little brother. How are you? Kurt, how are you? Nine and six, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, you guys like riding horses? And yeah, a yeah. lot. Yeah, a lot, huh? So, what's the name of the horse you ride? Colonel. Colonel. The Colonel. You both ride the Colonel? Mm hmm. Yeah, so you a good horse? Yeah, he's kind of lazy sometimes, but he does good. Yeah. So, I also understand that uh, you guys help out around the house and uh, help dad get some work done and things. Yeah. yeah. And tell me what you do. I help him go start ditches and move pipes and help him bail. Um, uh, sometimes um, we bail mini bells and he needs me to drive the truck so we can get the hay bales on. So you drive the truck, the tractor, and, and, and he picks up the bales and puts them on the, on the tractor? Uh, we have the truck and he puts them on the trailer. Okay, and you're, and you're driving? Mm -hmm. You a good driver? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like driving? Yeah. And you're nine? Mm -hmm. You have a driver's license? No. No. Okay. Just it helps that around. Do you get paid for your work? No. No? Uh, you, get, I... you get to eat for free though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can eat a lot too. Mm -hmm. And a little brother too. You like eating? Mm, not really. I don't eat a lot. You don't eat a lot. You're skinny as a rail. You better start eating. <laughs> So tell me about other things you do. You have some animals and you do um, showing? Yeah. yeah. What do you show? I show bucket calves. Bucket calves. Okay. And you did that last year? You going to do it again this year? Um, yeah. That's fun, huh? Yeah, take care of your animals. And how about you, brother? I show lambs and steers. Okay. So what do you guys, I mean, maybe, maybe older brother is a little bit you know, more can say about what he wants to do when he gets older. Maybe quite, he's only six, but you're, you're nine. I mean, you're driving a truck. So what do you think about doing when you get older? Um, I had four decisions, a construction worker, a policeman, a fireman, or a bus driver. 
One of those, huh? I like it. Brother, what do you think you're going to be doing? Uh, I want to grow up to be like my dad. Well, you can't get any better than that, right? Taking care of you guys and keeping you fed, keeping a roof over your head and doing a good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, there's three ways you learn. And it's very important that you you, you learn when you're, when you're young. I mean, you have to learn, right? Yeah. You don't just pop out and know everything. But you, you learn at home because mom and dad are going to tell you, you know, pick up your clothes and keep your room neat and, you know, and do some things at home and eat your dinner and, you know, whatever. I teach you how to be a gentleman, teach you to be a good person. Um, and then you go to school uh, and you learn, you know, math and you learn reading and you learn all kinds of different things with school. But then there's a third leg of that stool and that's you, you learn working. When you're working, you learn things that you don't learn at home and you don't learn at school. You know, when you're late for work, you know, or if you forget to drive the truck, it, it's a problem, you know? It's not like coming to class late, you get a tardy. You know, if you're not there on time to drive the truck, how's your dad put the hay on, you know? Mm -hmm. So it teaches you responsibility. So I'm really proud of you guys for being out there working at such a young age and you're doing a great job. Well, I have a little gift for you two. I have a, a, a crisp $100 bill that I'm gonna give to you Quaid, and I'm going to give to you, Court, and I want you guys to start your bank accounts with that $100 bill, and I want you to start saving and build up your savings account so you can do whatever you want when you grow up. You may change your mind. Maybe you're not going to be a bus driver. Maybe you're going to be a doctor. Uh, maybe you're going to be a veterinarian. You know, maybe you're going to be the president of the United States. Who knows? At nine years old driving a truck, I don't know. You know, you could probably just do about anything you want. Mm -hmm. So you save your money and you go to school, and I think you guys gonna do great things. I think the, the, the Wayman brothers are gonna just really tear it up out there. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Now, now you gotta be careful too because you got some money now. So you don't wanna, you know, I mean, it's nice to have some nice things. So, you know, these briar horses and you know, you all, everybody loves those, right? So you could spend a little bit, maybe pick yourself out something here in the store today and buy something for yourself. Give yourself a little pat on the back, buy a briar horse, you love that. And then, uh, save the rest. How's that sound? That sounds okay. Is that a deal? Mm -hmm. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Great okay. meeting you. Great meeting you. And you guys have a wonderful day and keep up the good work and take care of mom and dad and show them what you can do to, to really help them out there on the farm. Okay. All right, fellas. Take care now. Okay. All right. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters in Ogden, Utah at the IFA store, helping you grow the things you love, from bunnies to chickens to eggs. And now we're gonna grow some honey right here with these live beehives. Oh boy, they are busy and I hope they're not angry at us, you know, popping in and uh, checking things out. But they're making honey in here and you can get yourself a honey making beehive right here at IFA and make your own honey at home. It's amazing what these bees do. Holy mackerel. They're in there, they're working, they're making the honey, they're closing up the little cylinders. Oh, that's amazing. Bees are an amazing thing, how they work and what they do to create that beautiful honey. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. We've had a wonderful time here in Ogden, Utah at the IFA store. The IFA's company motto is helping you grow the things you love, whether it's little sprouts like this, honeybees, rabbits, or anything else you like to grow and love. Visit IFA whenever you're in the area. Say hello to these wonderful folks and stay tuned. We'll be back next week and follow us wherever we're at. God knows where we're gonna be next. Take care. Okay, that's good. Back up. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.